but in fact, his grandson died more likely of a funeral service here on Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, I can do it. So I would just stay until after service? Yeah, because we're about to start, so yeah, just tell her I'll be glad to talk with her after services. I don't, since I'm doing it, I don't really care. A lot of times it's a, I usually do it on a donation type basis when I do it. Good morning. Good morning. Or should I say top of the morning to y'all? Like the southern accent with the Irish accent. It's obviously St. Patrick's Day and nobody can pinch me because I've got my green shirt on. <laughs> Under the robe. Um, last night, for those of you who missed it, we definitely proved that you can have a blast without any alcohol and celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Not that Elkison Hall is bad, but it was just, do I have to have this? Can everybody hear me? Can ev No, I just want to know if everybody can hear me. I'd rather not use the mic if I don't have to. Anybody in the back? <laughs> Gee, thanks, Charlie. Okay, I think I'm on mic. All right. So we had a good time. Thank you to everybody who made food and brought pies and Irish bread and all that good stuff. They, yeah. they, Sarah had an awesome game. And I'm not just saying that because me and Amy Majors tied for first place. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> He's still lighting the candles. I do have an announcement. In order for me to order the, um, I, I need the money for the things. Lilies. Lilies before, by next Sunday, fifth, they're 12 apiece. Right. Okay, you have it for me today? Why are you looking at me? Because you, you ordered two. I know. Is it Palm Sunday yet? I know, but I, I don't want to wait to the last minute. My check comes in Wednesday. I always forget, that's why she's on my case. And I don't blame her. I really don't. Okay, that was one of the announcements out of the way. Um, we will be having a Seder supper on Monday, Thursday, 6 o'clock. I hate mics. <laughs> Fine, stay that way. Anyways, uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back uh, to let you know um, so that we can get a count. Uh, there's a list also of things that need to be brought. So take a look at that. It's all on the back table. The sign-up sheet for Lily's on the back table. Um, trying to think of what, anything else. Then on Easter, we are having a Easter breakfast at 9 o'clock. And then at the end of services, we're having an Easter egg hunt. And I have it on good authority that the Easter Bunny will be here to hide the eggs. Crack me up, kids. 
And talk to Kelly if you want to be part of the vendor show. Yes. Okay. Still look. Indoors are going fast. You heard it here first. <laughs> yes. Can I make a Sure, come on. I'm not in here yet. I know, come on. Uh, this might go under prayer request, but Shh. last week, Nina went to visit our Kroger canteen and gave her communion. She's in hospice now in the facility in Farmington, like some more other So talk to uh, Alvina if you want the address. Nina's not here. She decided to go to the Dominican Republic. So I get to be in charge. Yay! You're right. Yay! Uh huh. All right. Any other announcements? Okay. Then will you please all stand, if you are able, and join me in the opening hymn from Ashes to the Living Font. And so you're going to do one, two, instead, and go to the third, the fifth, the fifth, it's the insert, the fifth Sunday on the bottom, and then do the fourth verse. I know it's confusing. So please rise. It's on the insert in the um, bulletin. If you all now join me and call the worship, new life rises, that which rises must first fall and die. Single grains merely remain as they are unless they are released to the ground. The grains of the earth that fall will multiply and nourish. Come, die to self and live a life in service to the living God, and God, God will raise us up. Amen. Amen. And now the invocation. God of grace and grace, we gather today seeking a thought in the way of Jesus, 
The path he chose for his disciples was one of service and required us that we lay down our desires and our interests. <coughs> May it be so. Amen. Okay, guys. You like that fancy fishing rod? You're a fish? I'm a shark. And you're a shark. <laughs> I like to be on the sea star. You're a sea star. Catch me. Catch you. Yeah. Why? Your 
Next time, I'll catch you with the hook, I promise. <laughs> do I know my kids or do I know my kids? <sighs> Bobby? First reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another to say to each other, Know the Lord for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 15. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to those who were able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, about this, we have much to say that is hard to explain, since you have become sluggish in hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic elements of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is unskilled in the word of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties have been trained by practice to distinguish good from evil. Today's gospel reading comes from John, verses 20 through 33. And now among those who went up to worship at the festival with the Greeks, they came to Philip, who from the Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to speak to Jesus. And Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it will remain just as a single grain. But if it dies, it, must, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who 
take their lives in this world will keep it for eternal, eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven, and I, was glor I glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said, that was thunder. Others said, an angel was spoken to him. And Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world, and now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from this earth, will drive all people <clears throat> to my, <clears throat> oh, I lost my place, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will drive all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> <clears throat> Take a look outside. What do you see? We see trees that look dead, don't we? Not much on them, um, some early buds, thanks to the weather. But basically, Kind of looks dead out there, and gloomy, especially with the gray skies. Michigan's famous for this time of year. I see some green starting to poke up through the grass, but there's still a lot of brown out there. Do you ever notice that in nature, we see the story of Jesus over and over again, if you really look, you can see the pattern. In today's passage, they talk about the fact that the seed must fall to the ground and die, the grain, the wheat. The trees lose their leaves and they lose their acorns. Now, the tree itself goes to sleep in a way, but the leaves on the tree have to die and fall off, and the acorns have to fall if it's an oak. Their seeds are spread from other types of trees. Flowers die. We start out the year in a time of stillness, and you might say death, death to nature. But then we get to spring, and I got daffodils up in my yard. I bet some of you do too, because the weather turned warm early. So you see new things starting to sprout up. But before those new things could sprout up, something had to die. Something had to be put in the ground. A lot of our oak trees get spread by little squirrels that forget where they put their nuts. It's a fact. Everybody has a time of their life when they feel a deadness, so to speak. Like they're getting nowhere. That's the time, if you're in that time, that you need to stop and pray and reflect. But as the winter gives way to spring, it brings beautiful leaves and flowers and warmer weather, thank you, Lord. And all that beauty comes about, joyousness. 
new babies are born like lambs and, and sheep, and that's the same thing. But, you know, baby calves and springtime's baby birds, all new life. But what does that remind you of? It reminds me of the fact that our Lord and our Savior came on this earth to take our sins away. But in order to do that, he had to die. That's the part of Christianity most people honestly like to ignore. They like the fact that Jesus saved us. They love Easter Sunday when he rose again and he beat death. But really, the thing Jesus did for us that saves us is not the fact that he rose again. What saved us is that he was crucified, buried in a tomb, or put in a tomb back then, and was there in death for two days, and then on the third day he arose. And yes, arising from the death is overcoming it, but the actual act of saving us from our sins was on the cross. To, when I was preparing this message, and even though I don't use notes, I do actually run it through my head, people. I also let God speak through me. I was looking out my front window at this big oak tree, I mean maple tree next door, and I thought about the fact that certain branches on that tree in these windy, windy days have fallen into our yard. And I thought about the fact that that meant that that tree, at least part of it, was dying. Before Jesus went to the grave, he knew he was going to die. He knew what he had to do. He didn't, do you read, notice in that part of the scripture I read today? He said, I wish I could ask the Lord to not have to do this. He didn't really look forward to it, did he? Even in the last hours, he said, before he went and was captured, as he prayed at the Gethsemane, he said, Father, take this from me if you can. But if not, I'll go. Some people think that Jesus went into this with a sense of, I'm ready, I'm proud to do this. Well, yeah, he did. But you know what? He was part man, and that man didn't want to suffer. But we all have to suffer somewhat in order to understand the glory that is given to us. Then spring goes into summer, and summer is gorgeous in most places. You've got big, the trees are all fully out there with their leaves, fresh air, and then you have your humid days, but you know, that's what happens when you live in a waterfront state. But in summer, time of vacation and relaxation. In summer is a time to step back and evaluate your life, really. It's a time we have fun with family. You know, 
Summer's the time of family reunions, right? Big picnics where everybody gets together. And it reminds us of our heritage. And then we go into fall, which is beautiful with its leaves changing colors. But those leaves changing colors and bringing us joy means that they're beginning to become to the end of their lives. Some people don't think of trees and leaves and plants as living things, but they are, they grow and they live and they die just like we humans do. And before they fall off usually, the trees wither and turn brown. And then they fall. And their part of this world is done. That part of being beautiful leaves, all different great colors, and glory of fall reminds me of Palm Sunday, when Jesus is, comes into the city in glory. Everyone is praising his name. Everyone is rejoicing in him. It says his triumphant entry on a donkey. While across town, a dignitary is coming in with a full regatta and horses. But his triumphant entry into the city, that's what fall reminds me of. And then comes winter again. And winter is a time that I connect with where Jesus not only actually died, but think of the emotions Jesus must have gone through in one week. That triumphant entry. All the time in the back of his mind, he knew what was to come. Can you imagine telling your friends, I'm dying, I'm going to die, and they not understand what you're talking about? These are men that have followed him for a long time, and women that have been by his side for three years, and they still didn't understand what the man said. That had to be frustrating. And Jesus, even though he was in the midst of his disciples, had to feel alone. And a lot of times in death, we feel alone. I mean, the people feel alone. The person dying feels alone. When I was 40, I had a stroke. They told Tom that I wouldn't live. They told him to gather the family. And Tom felt all alone. Now our daughter was there, but she was 17. One daughter was there, and she was 17. My other daughter was up in Chicago. But they all couldn't really understand how Tom felt. 
And when I, I was in a coma for three weeks, so when I woke up, I couldn't talk. And believe it or not, people, I couldn't talk. <laughs> and they told Tom that if I did survive, I would never talk again. And I would have to use a walker. Now, I have a cane now for a whole other reason. I went several years without a walker or a cane. And obviously, I got my voice back. <laughs> the thing is, during the time I couldn't talk, and I would try to write things and it looked like scribble, they didn't know, because my mind, my communication part of my brain had suffered. I had to be retaught. Everybody still thought I was dying as far as the medical staff cared. I had people coming and visiting. My dad flew down from Michigan. We were living in Tennessee at the time. But I never felt so alone. People whispered around me. The man who went on the cross and gave everything you could give to save us, felt alone. I venture to say he was scared. <clears throat> he asked, God, please take this from me if there's any other way to save these people. He spoke here about he wanted to, wished he didn't have to do it. But he still did it. God is asking us to be his hands and feet in this world. In winter, spring, fall, and summer. He wants us to go out there and be a fisher of men. As I told the children, that basically means showing people Jesus' love because we show that we're Christian more by our actions than anything that comes out of our mouth. I semi-stand up here for what, 15, 20 minutes a week and talk at you? But most of what I do, I don't do in the pulpit or from this table to show Christ's love. I go out and show it when I'm shopping, when I'm at the doctor's office, wherever I am. That's how we can be good disciples. And in a way, that's how we can keep spring instead of winter in our hearts. This church does an awesome job of reaching out. We gotta get the diapers delivered. We take food to the food pantry. We buy animals for people in other countries with the cookie raised by the Sunday school class, cookie sale. And there's other missions we do. Every single month we have another mission. And that is another way that we can keep spring, even in winter, alive. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I just want to remind everybody and the people that might watch this video, Jesus did come down to this earth gave up his home in heaven, came down to this earth, walked among the men, and at the end, he sacrificed his life 
and took all the sins of the world for those who believed in him. From back then to now, he got on that cross and nailed to that cross, and he died for the love of you and me. And then he rose three days later, showing he overcame death he over and left those sins in the ground so that when we ascend to heaven, we will be with God. As we are nearing Holy Week, please continue to reflect on what you're doing for God and what God has done for you. Because he is always, always with you through the good times, through the bad times, through the happy times, and through the hard times. Amen. Join me in the prayer of dedication. Thank you, O God, for your way to us. Accept now our fines and offerings and use us as our gifts for your kingdom. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Any other prayer requests? goodness. So if you did not hear her, she, her daughter's husband passed away just a little bit. Your son. Your firstborn grandson. My apologies. Just one block away. Our hearts are definitely with your family. Thank you. We know that this is a difficult time. There are people in this congregation that have lost children, including myself, and a grandchild. Hard because you're feeling for yourself and your daughter. What is your daughter's name? Marilyn. Marilyn. And do you mind me asking your name? Lisa. Lisa? Okay. Lisa, we will definitely keep you guys in our prayers. Anybody else have a prayer request? Kelly? I'd like to say a prayer for my Aunt Linda. She had her, her hip replaced, and then she had her other hip replaced, and it's not going so well. She has to have a walker. She's having a hard time walking. It's very painful. So prayers for her. Who was that again? My Aunt Linda. Aunt Linda. Okay. Kathy, Kathy has a new granddaughter. Kira was born March 10th and doing very well. 
And this is such a prayer answered. Yes, thank you. Yes, she had, her mom went through a difficult, difficult pregnancy. And we are so thank you, Lord, for Kira. Okay. The flowers are a memory of Vicki's mom and dad and my Kathy. Kathy's mom's passing. And your mom's passing. Right, Kat. Am I reading that right? Your mom's passing? I did, I did that wrong, <laughs> Yay, for once it's not me. <laughs> I want that recorded in history. It is, yeah. Okay, and yeah, we need to keep our senior pastor, Nina, in prayer. She is, as I mentioned earlier, by now in the Dominican Republic. Uh, she will be back next Sunday, uh, but safe travels. She's quite the uh, globetrotter, isn't she? I want to thank everybody for your prayers, for my daughter and her husband and the situation that has been going on. Um, they're doing very well in Florida for the past couple weeks. Bridget loves her job and her new boss. Keith has got full-time daycare now. And those of you who know my son-in-law know why I'm laughing. Um, <laughs> He can't put that one, no. <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you. And uh, I got a phone call. I think the, the week that they, the first week they were down in Florida, which is like a week, week and a half ago, two weeks. Mom, Renee won't quit crying for Gamma. It made me feel good if I cried. Yeah. Will you please talk to her? Because we can't get her to quit crying. Oh. <laughs> oh. But then the next, and two days later, I got to talk to her on the video. So that was fun. She's like, Gamma? Gamma? She's eight months old for those who don't know. Anyways, they're doing well. So if you all now join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in a time of change, in a time of winter beginning to get into spring. We want to pray for those who have lost a grandson and a son, that you will lift this poor family up, that you will hug them. There's no real way to comfort someone except through your love that has lost a child or a grandchild. So Lord, we pray that you will just hold them Hug them and let your presence be known. Lord, we thank you for Kira. We thank you for the new baby that we, oh, prayed for the whole time her mom was carrying her. And we are so thankful that she's here and she's doing well. What a blessing. Lord, we pray for Nina, that she have a fun trip and a safe trip and a great vacation. We pray that you will bring her safely back to us. We pray for Kelly's aunt, 
that you will heal that hip that's bothering her, that you will help her rehabilitate and gain use back and be out of pain. Lord, we pray for St. Paul as a congregation, as a family. We are thankful for the times of fellowship we have together. And we pray that we will stick together in this time of change and growth. Lord, We honor those who have passed, like Kathy's mom. Like Vicki's family, mom and dad. We all here have someone that has passed that we're missing. And we are thankful that you put them in our lives for the time that they were here. And I pray that you will help us remember the good times and the love that was shared. And now, Lord, we come to you with prayers that are so hard that we can't speak them. So we come to you in silent prayer. And now, Lord, we end our time of prayer by saying the prayer that Jesus taught so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> and now, will you join me in hymn number 202, Lonesome Valley.
Please be seated. Now on that night, so long ago, Jesus was celebrating the Passover with his disciples. And as they reclined around the table, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my bones, which I get gladly break for you, have broken for you. Take and eat and remember. And then he took the wine. And he said, this is my blood, which I will shed for you. Take and drink and do this in remembrance of me. And now, take and eat and drink and remember Jesus' love for you. And now stand with me for a closing hymn. I'll hail the power. Amen.
this week and spread the spring and joy of Jesus' love and the sacrifice he made for us. And now all are welcome to come join the singing of Let There Be Peace on Earth as a family. <laughs> we got room for all. It should be in there. So I know the secretary's slow, but she usually makes sure that's in there. <laughs>
Don't ever sit next to me at a theater. <laughs> 